Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Daniel, the sixth chapter of that book. <clears throat> the book of Daniel, the sixth chapter. The first through the sixth verse. The verse the sixth. The sixth chapter, the first through the fifth verse. Then the sixth chapter, the first through the fifth verse. And there we will find these words. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom and hundred and twenty princes, which should be over the whole kingdom, <clears throat> and over these presidents of whom Daniel was first. that the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel <clears throat> was preferred above the presidents and the princes, because he, because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over <clears throat> the whole realm. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could find none occasion nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then these men, then say these men, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Blessed be unto the name of the Lord. We cannot find any occasion against this Daniel unless we find it against him pertaining to his God. Because this man has proven himself to be a perfect and upright man. A man of faith. A man who has proven to be ye steadfast unmovable and always availing in the works of his Lord. So the only way that we might have a chance of tripping him up, overcoming him, is by way of testing his faith and his commitment unto his God. So let us have it. Let us have it. Let us put his feet to the flame. See whether he is willing to give it up to give it all in order to hold on to 
his faith and his obedience in and toward his God. So let us think on this thought this morning. I want to talk about the enemy. The enemy. The enemy. First and foremost, let it be known that there is no extent that the enemy is not willing to go to in order to break the wheel of the person of God, of the people of God. There is no extent that the enemy is not willing to go to, to break or to shake your faith in God and your obedience toward God. The enemy. The enemy. Is anyone or anything that seek to inflict injury upon you. The enemy is anyone or anything that seek to inflict injury upon you. Which suggests that even a friend today can become an enemy tomorrow. Even a friend today can become an enemy tomorrow. Because an enemy is anybody or anything that seeks to inflict injury. Upon you. And the more that your enemy know about you, the more leverage it has in inflicting harm upon you. The more your enemy knows about you the more leverage it has in formulating a plot or a plan against you. And according to the word of God, each and every one of us who are out there on this parking lot or who is a part of our viewing or listening audience share three common enemies. According to the word of God, each and every one of us shares three common enemies. And those enemies are the world, the flesh, and the devil. For the world is the enemy's hunting ground. Meaning that this place that we live in is a dangerous place for us to walk through. I don't care how beautiful it may be, no matter how blessed it can be, this place that we live in is a dangerous place for us to walk through. The world is the enemy's hunting ground. And our flesh is the enemy's prey. For the enemy, he, 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 the, the, the enemy, he, 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 he feeds upon our flesh. Our flesh is the enemy's 
pray. We have to pray, pay close attention and closely monitor our flesh. Like unto us when we were parents of young children. We have to pay close attention and closely monitor the places in which they went. The people in which they're associating with. Even the music that they would listen to. We have to closely watch and monitor it because it can have a negative influence upon them. And so it is with our flesh. You see, seeing vice begin as a thought. It is vice fall upon. And then it becomes a vision where it is visualized. And if the, 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 the thought of that vision and the vision of that sin is not immediately brought into submission, brought into captivity, it then penetrates into the flesh. And the flesh mechanically acts out the mental suggestion of the, suggestion of the flesh. We have to pay close attention, monitor closely our flesh, because our flesh is the enemy's prey. And our enemy, our adversary, is the devil. And he come but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The enemy is not an idle spirit, but the enemy is a very aggressive spirit. Come but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And the enemy is kind of like a pirate, but on dry land. And I say on dry land is because Moses proved that the Red Sea, that demons and devils cannot swim. So the enemy is like a pirate but on dry land. A pirate but on dry and a pirate never attacks an empty vessel while it is headed out to sea. But what he does is he lay and he waits until it is full of cargo, full of treasure, and then he launches his attack. And the enemy's attack upon you is nothing more than the indication of the cargo in which you carry. You see, Black Chapel, the more valuable you are to God, the more righteous you are, the more faithful you are, the more obedient you are toward God, the more you're going to have to contend with the enemy. I said the more you have to contend with the enemy. The enemy is like a pirate on dry land. A pirate never attacks an empty vessel while it is headed out to sea. But he lay and he waits until it is full of cargo, full of goods, full of treasure, and then he launches his attack upon it. And the enemy's attack upon you is nothing more than the indication of the cargo in which you carry. The enemy is trying to rob you of your cargo, rob you of your faith, rob you of your obedience, rob you of your commitment and dedication to what God. That is why Paul told the church down in Rome, the good that I would, I do not, and the evil that I would not, that I do. Every time I set out to do good, evil is always present. Oh, wretched man am I. Who then shall save me from the body of this flesh? Nobody but Jesus. He said, I thank God for Jesus Christ. Meaning that the only way we can protect ourselves from our own flesh, the only way we can protect ourselves from our own flesh is by way of Watching ourselves in the blood of Jesus. We have to be washed in the blood of Jesus. Meaning that we have to undergo a spiritual blood transfusion. We have to become transfused. The only way we can save ourselves and protect ourselves from our own flesh. We have to undergo a spiritual blood transfusion. We have to become transfused. And black shepherd, you can tell whether you've been transfused or not. You can tell whether you had a spiritual blood transfusion or not. Because if you've been transfused, you can love your enemy. You can pray for those who curse you. You can do good toward those who despite and use you, persecute you, and say all manner of evil things against you falsely. The enemy is out to rough up your flesh. The greatest enemy that we can possibly have is the enemy that lies with inside of us. Our flesh is the enemy's prey. He preys upon our very own flesh. And the more your enemy know about you, the more leverage he has in formulating a plot or a plan. And the enemy knew Daniel 
Daniel. The enemy knew Daniel. He knew the type cargo in which Daniel was carrying. He knew Daniel was a man of God, a man of faith, a, an obedient man toward God. So what the enemy decided to do was to ship away at his faith, ship away at his obedience, ship away at his commitment and dedication toward his God. And I wonder this morning, Black Shepherd, do we have any out there on the part of life who's a part of our viewing audience who been shipped away at before by God, by the enemy, who had the enemy to do some shipping on you, shipped away at your faith, shipped away at your patience, shipped away at your peace, shipped away at your joy, shipped away at your long suffering, shipped away at you until the point where all you had left to hold on to was the promises of an invisible God. The promises of the invisible God. When he promised you that if you fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious of the workers of iniquity, then soon they will be cut down like bread and wither away like green herbs. And all you have to do is trust in the Lord and do good, and thou shalt be fed. And I wonder this morning, Black Shepherd, do we have any out there in the parking lot? Do we have any who's a part of our good Lord? Know that you serve a God who will feed you, feed you, feed you bread from heaven, feed you peace in the midst of a storm, feed you joy in the midst of sorrow, feed you a way out of no way. Do you know you serve a God who will feed you? And by God and your soul, you ought to give it up to God this morning. you, but he's able to deliver you 
you while allowing you to remain therein. We have an inside delivering God. A God who doesn't have to take you out of your situation in order to deliver you. But he's able to deliver you while allowing you to remain therein. Do you know, Black Chapel, beyond a shadow of any doubt, that you serve an inside delivering God. An inside delivering God. Doesn't have to take you out. Leave you right where you are. Can you maintain and sustain you? If you know you serve an inside delivering God, you ought to give up the God this morning. You ought to give up the God this morning. Give it up to God. Inside delivering God doesn't have to take you out in order to deliver you. But deliver you while allowing you to remain therein. Don't be intimidated by the sheep and the whales. Because that's just God's way of using the enemy to prepare your wings. To prepare your wings. Because of the ship in the way of Daniel, he's still soaring high right now. God's people are still being inspired, lifted up, influenced, motivated, strengthened with that blessed assurance in knowing that I serve a God who doesn't have to take me out of my situation in order to deliver me. But he's able to deliver me while allowing me to remain therein. He's not just a deliverer, but he's also a keeper. And when it comes time to be kept, there's nothing better to have on your side than a keeper. Let us keep it up for the keeping power of God. The Lord is over. The Lord is over. Bow your